done a little bit of sanding. And while I was in here, <clears throat> I was trying to figure out how do I know when I've done a good job? How do I know when to stop, basically? And how do I know if what I've done is any better than what somebody else did? What's, what's the test, the metric? And I realized that uh, throughout the videos I was watching of the pros, what they would do is they would take a knife or a trowel or whatever, and they'd place it up against the wall and they would look for gaps. And where there are no gaps, there's nothing to do. So having remembered that, I started going around to at least the places that I could reach and testing. And what I found was that uh, most of it was okay. Some places uh, required a little work. Um, but just going through the, the process kind of, it helped me to understand why I was convinced that there was a problem in the first place. And that is that all of the work that had been done, um, I don't know if you can, yes, you can still see it. All of the work that had been done in these rooms uh, was pretty much all about six, maybe eight inches wide. Um, there are some wider patches, not many. And let's be honest, some of them I may have done. Uh, but the point is that the, the patches, because the streaks of mud were all at most eight inches wide, it meant that nobody had ever taken a wider tool to do the job. So a six inch knife is basically what you use on your second pass, not what you use on your last pass. Um, there we go. And I think, yeah, I, I couldn't express it, I couldn't verbalize it, but it is possible that that uh, cue is what I recognized uh, when I came in the first time. So because nothing had ever been done with a wide tool, um, it couldn't, there's no way that it could possibly be uh, finished to, I guess, to the standard that I expect. So I went around with the tool and I looked for places that needed work and where they still exist. Like there were some, uh, yeah, there, there are not many, but where those places exist, I did, I did the fill in. Um, I'm actually, so there are a couple of criteria. First of all, um, um, I went looking for places that were perpendicular to a window and close to a window. So this one was critical. This one was actually less important. And something, for instance, on this back wall, unless it was really bad, which that the corner was terrible, but um, otherwise I actually wouldn't bother uh, with most of this going way out. So, I, I mean, I, I did the, the thing and they weren't that bad, but um, I went only on the seam. So I wasn't too worried about the up and down, but the thing is that when you have a window that's uh, sort of perpendicular, it makes any line really, really obvious. Now, these lines are mine. Um, they'll get knocked down tomorrow when I sand. Um, but I was just filling in a, a valley, a low spot. And uh, I actually, I, I did look at the ceilings. Um, so over here, it was pretty bad. The rest of it's not bad, so I didn't touch it. So, let's see, this is, I think was not, I'll turn that around. This is not great. I don't know if you can see the gap there. There. So this, this is not great. But at the same time, because of its position, nobody will ever catch that. So that's not something I'm going to bother with. Um, and the closets, I didn't even, I really, I, di I didn't even look in the closets because who cares? Um, out here though, I did look and it's not bad. So I'm not going to mess around with too much of it. This, 
it took a little bit of uh, work, but again, not not too much. You can go crazy. Um, I guess that's it. This this uh, room here. This took quite a bit of work because there was a, a nice big section here right beside the window. Over here, it was visible to the naked eye that that needed work, so I, I did that. And over here, it was just a dog's breakfast, so that got done. Over here, not too bad, but I did it anyway. I had mud on the trowel, so why not? Or on the hawk, sorry. Um, and that was just a clean up. Not, not too bad, but again, I was here. I had the, the mud on the hawk, so I just took care of it. And <clears throat> having learned what I have learned, there are spots. So there's one section here. So you'd have to go back several videos to see, but this right here is a, um, a joist. So all of the joists come like so like so until here and that's the last joist over here they're kind of they just go outwards because there's not much room between the ceiling and the roof and when they did that um, so again I I, it's, I don't know if it's gonna show up on the camera but um, uh, just trying to, so I've got grid lines on my phone I'm trying to line them up with the, the corner over here so if you accept that this is straight to about here you may be able to see that the ceiling just angles way up from approximately uh, here so what I did was uh, I tried to fill in this area here because it's a very sharp transition right there it was it was really really obvious so it's less obvious now but it is still kind of there and I noticed that uh, there's a small crack here so knowing what I know and fixing that other crack in the other room now I'm able to uh, to fix this one I find once I get into it the work is not all that challenging um, I, I don't think it requires a great deal of skill but it does require a, a great deal of stick to itiveness. And I think the fellows that were in here recently, um, you know, they're doing this for, uh, to make a profit. So it, it's in their short term best interests to declare the job finished as quickly as possible. Whereas for me, that's not the case. Um, I have to live with this uh, until either I sell it. So I wanted to, to make it look good. So I've sanded this out. This wasn't that bad. You saw me working on this. This was horrible, just abysmal. And this also was, um, you know, nobody was going to die, but it, it did need to be filled up. I've already sanded it, but you can see that I, I left some, uh, some gaps that, that was actually, I was okay with that because I, I understood that this was going to take another pass anyway. Um, so let us see just how much, if any, improvement. So I, um, hmm. I don't know how I can show that on the camera. Anyway, it's a lot better than it was. Um, yeah, maybe that's a better. So there's a transition here where the framing takes a big. Um, the, uh, I don't know what this is called. There's, a, I guess, a, a joist here. So there's a, a, jo a proper joist, sorry, that, that runs along the, the whole length of the house up until the steel beam, which is hidden in here. And then there's a joist that terminates basically, well, there must be more than one. There's probably one here. And I don't know. Anyway, um, so because the stairs have to go up here, they, they covered that off with two, uh, two by tens that goes between the outside wall and that last joist right there. Um, but the framing that's above it was not flush. So this wall back here is, uh, let's see. Okay, so you can see that when I put the trowel flush against that uh, quasi-joist, you can see a gap of, 
I don't know, three millimeters or uh, for, met, uh, sorry, Imperial folks, um, what's that, an eighth of an inch? That looks a lot more than an eighth of an inch. So I, I don't know, maybe I, I don't really know what an inch looks like. So let's just say it's at least three millimeters, maybe four. It was really noticeable. And um, again, there's, there's just no way you're going to hide that if the biggest tool that you use is a six inch knife. So it was really, really noticeable. It's still fairly noticeable to me. So I don't know, maybe the job's not done. Ah, there's, so you can see, I don't know, can you see? What you're, what I am looking for is light coming through. Maybe it's more obvious on this side. Yes, okay, now you can see. Get my fingers on it. Whoops, sure. All right, so what I want to do is eliminate that white line. Oh, so this side is, is not bad. Certainly it's better. Yeah, that's fine. And here, yeah, really not bad. Oh, of course the camera's having trouble focusing now. It's coming close on that, so we can focus on that. Yeah, it's getting confused by all the white. Anyway, <laughs> it is what it is. And, ah, okay. So, work to be done, yeah? Focus. Okay. So, oh, oh dear. And that's after I filled it in once. Okay, well, guess I'm not done. Last thing I wanted to point out, um, the fella left me with a tube of caulk. He said it was the very best thing for corners. All the gray, by the way, is the scraping from the, uh, the stainless blade. Um, Anyway, he said it was the very best stuff for corners, and so he basically loaded it into every corner uh, that he came to. And in some cases that was okay, and in some cases it was a disgusting mess. So um, I've actually taken it out of most of the corners, and then tried to rebuild them with uh, mud. The reason that I did that was um, because when, you, when you're using caulk, it, it's not um, a stiff material, it, it flows, right? So everything is rounded, and I didn't really want rounded corners, I wanted something somewhat crisp. So it strikes me that the caulk is a good idea in some situations where you have a corner that just won't stop cracking. Um, but I suspect it's the last resort, not the first. So anyway. I, I believe that at this point, this room, although it's not perfect, it's good enough. So I'm just, I'm, um, <laughs> I hope to God I'm done uh, loading any more drywall mud anywhere. I just want to sand it and then prime it. So <clears throat> that will be tomorrow.